what I want to show you today is the end product of my Daiwa Zillion real customization trick out. First of all, I covered already that I stuck a blue anodized aluminum handle on it, double paddle with these nice EVA round balls sort of on the end. Next, what I did is, you know, this was all silver, everything was silver. I had a silver handle, silver everything. Next, I went and I put on the uh, handle nut, the screw, and the retaining ring in red. Next, I went to this red drag, uh, star drag, with the little perforated holes there. And then next, after that, I went with a red and black, just like the original, ticking cast control knob. After that, I tweaked this reel because it, you got to remember now, it originally was silver with red accents. Well, then I went from the, the knob here to screws. The three screws that are in the reel. Got one, two, three. I went with red anodized uh, dur aluminum, it's called. Screws with that same little Allen wrench for uh, tightening them up. As you can see, the reel already had red accents inside this silver band here. There's red. On the outside, there's these red stripes. And there's these red dots here as an accent. After that, I went, and you can't see it very easily, but under here on the level wind cap, I went with blue. Okay, so the next thing is, is there is a silver bar that runs with so that the level wind here runs on. You can see that silver bar in there. Uh, that's going to be blue. And then over here, this is how you take the side plate off. This is your magnetic adjustment. They give you uh, just a straight slot silver screw here. And this is how the side plates will pop off. That will be, I believe, blue with that same Allen key type uh, wrench that goes on it. So this is how I've ended up tweaking out the reel. One of the uh, greatest things that I did on it is I got rid of the silver plastic knob and went with this red thumb bar right there. Then I went Right under here is also a little holographic decal that I stuck there that Hedgehog Studios, who provided everything except the handle in Tokyo, Japan. The, the handle came via Daiwa. And now when you hold this, this reel, I'm telling you, this baby is so blinged out it's ridiculous. But to top it all off, do you notice the rod? Look at that rod. All red. And if you look at it closely down here, there's the model number. It's like uh, got a design in it of two different colored reds. Okay. Um, it's cork and foam, which is literally fantastic because I'm not a cork guy. Then you go to the proprietary reel seat with a little hole there for lightness underneath. This is a Phoenix crankbait rod. Uh, right in here, I mean, I don't know if you can see it or not. Right in here, this is some, some kind of beautiful material right here. It's like looking in the glass right here, these three sections. Just absolutely fantastic. There's the, the name. It's the Phoenix 
a fiberglass crankbait rod. They supposedly have do their own eyes too. They're all stainless steel with you know zirconium inserts or whatever. Seven foot four crankbait rod. The reason I wanted crankbait is because I don't do any crankbait. <laughs> I wanted it because this is a fiberglass rod. Fiberglass. I think I mentioned on several other videos how I always wanted fiberglass. That's, um, that's the reason I'm an ugly stick guy. I want a rod that bends. I want a supple tip. I don't want this one foot of the tip bending and the rest being some two by four. That's not the type of fishing that I do. You can see I'm out here at the inlet. When I'm trout fishing, I want a nice soft rod. I want a nice soft rod in all my fishing. Being a saltwater inshore guy, I don't like that, those stiff rods. Uh, and this is from Tackle Warehouse out in California. Phoenix rods. I don't hear a lot about them on the East Coast. Of course, I'm on the East Coast. They're on the West Coast. But they make everything from what I understand down near Blue Marlin to Blue Gill rods. Uh, I forgot to mention uh, about the Phoenix crankbait rod. You know, I mean, why is the, the whole entire world is pretty much, you know, designed for the bass boy. Phoenix gives you this as a hook hanger. I mean, it's stout. That's a stout little hook hanger right there. Uh, see it? Well, you know, as saltwater fishermen, let's say I'm fishing right now a DOA shrimp. Right? And you would take your, you know, your DOA and you'd, what, hook it down there and then try to stick it in a rod holder? So you stick it in a rod holder doesn't count for us. If I stick this down there, it ain't going down the rod holder. And there's no really other place for a hook hanger. I mean, there is no other hook hanger. So in all reality, you know, it's really kind of too bad that the entire world revolves around the bass guy. Um, I won't be using that. And I guess I'll just be kind of doing this on my anodized aluminum handle. You know, something like that. Um, I could put a hook hanger up here, a real small, nice little hook hanger, maybe up here, but that might detract from the entire situation. This isn't your average rod, though. You know, this isn't going to be your average rod. Um, this is for Dave's, Dave's hands only. So, stick it in the rod holder. I won't be using that hook hanger down here. You know what's killing me out here today is how it's a mass of humanity and it's a damn Wednesday. There's people everywhere. All the damn fair weathers. God, does this thing cast beautiful. First, First fish on the red rod. Nice yellow mouth trout. Yes, sir. First fish on the new rod. Yellow mouth trout. Away shrimp. Be away, yellow mouth trout. Kind of sorry you're missing such a beautiful day.